This video is on how to field strip and clean the Walther PDP. This is not a disassembly video. I'm only going to break it down as far as I need to go for basic maintenance. To get started, you'll need a few things. CLP, that stands for Cleaner, Lubricant, and Protectant. I've tried all the major brands and they all work, but lately I've been using Lucas brand. I would advise using a needle applicator bottle like this one. You can get much more precise with your application, meaning you're going to be able to get it exactly where you want it. Cotton swabs, and these are specific for gun cleaning. They have an angled tip, making it easier to get in between the rail channels. 9mm size jag. 9mm size bronze bore brush. But make sure it's bronze. Don't use steel or anything like that. You don't want anything abrasive going inside your bore. A cleaning rod with a handle that allows the rod to spin freely. I say that because if you don't get a handle that allows the bore brush and the rod to spin freely, the brush will just scrape right over the rifling as you're pushing it through the bore and you may not get a thorough clean. 9mm size bore snake. A cleaning rag. You can use an old t-shirt, but I prefer rags that are specific for gun cleaning so they don't leave lint. And I didn't put them on camera, but you're going to need cleaning patches. If you want to save a few dollars, you can use a cut up old t-shirt. Just cut pieces off about the size of a quarter. You can buy all of this at your local gun shop or sporting goods store, but I'll put links to everything below if you just want to have it shipped to you. I always start out with a clear and empty weapon, but of course I'm going to double check anyway. To do that, press the magazine release button. Drop the magazine. Now inspect the chamber. And don't do it just by looking down towards the magwell. Actually tilt the gun and look inside the chamber to make sure it's 100% clear. Now press the slide release lever and let the slide go home. Pull the trigger. Now grab onto both sides of the slide lock. Not the slide stop, but the slide lock. Start pulling down on both sides. As you're applying downward pressure on the slide lock, use your strong hand to pull the slide back just a little bit. You only have to pull the slide back just a hair and you'll feel the slide lock give. As soon as it does, you can push the slide all the way off. Watch closely so you can see just how little the slide needs to move back. If you pull it back too far, it's going to reset the trigger and you'll have to start over again. And to do this easily, I'm making a C-clamp with my strong hand. And I'm pushing forward with my thumb and pulling back with my pointing and middle finger just to move the slide. Sometimes as you're pushing the slide off, it gets hung up. If it does, just squeeze the slide and the frame together like this and continue pushing the slide off. Now that the frame and slide are separated, remove the recoil spring by pressing down from chamber end to muzzle end. Remove the barrel. And this is as far as you need to go for a basic field strip and clean. You have the frame, the recoil spring, the barrel, the slide, and the magazine. You don't have to do this in any particular order, but today I'm going to start with the barrel. Attach the bore brush to the cleaning rod. Add CLP to the brush. And I'm only going to push the brush through the bore in one direction, from chamber end to muzzle end. I'm not going to push the dirt out and pull it right back in. Kind of like sweeping the floor, you push the broom in one direction. You don't sweep back and forth. So how I do that is push the bore brush through. When it reaches the other side, I take the brush off, pull the rod out, reattach the brush and push it through again, same direction. There's no magic number on how many times you need to push it through. In this case, I'm gonna do it a few times and move on. Now that I feel like I've loosened up all the carbon and fouling with the bore brush, I'm gonna attach the jag. Add CLP to your cleaning patch. and push it through the bore from chamber end to muzzle end. The first patch will come out really dirty like this. Just repeat this step until the patches start coming out clean. Once you're satisfied that your bore is clean, add CLP to your nylon brush and scrub the outside of the barrel. Pay particular attention to the feed ramp. You'll want to make sure that's as clean as you can possibly get it. Now get your bore snake. Make sure it's the correct caliber. On the weighted end, it's going to say 38, 9mm, 380, 357. Those are all the same diameter. In this case, mine says 38. 
Place the weighted end in the chamber and pull it out through the muzzle end. You'll only need to do this one or two times and if you look inside the bore you'll see that it's like black glass inside. You can get the bore pretty clean with a bore brush and cleaning patches but nothing can get it as clean as a bore snake. I'm not able to pick it up on camera very well but that's spotless. There's not even a speck of dust inside that bore. Now I'm going to wipe it all down. Now I'm going to add a fresh coat of CLP to the outer surface just to leave a layer of protectant. Now I'm going to start on the slide, add CLP to a brush, and scrub all outer surfaces. Now work on scrubbing the inside of the slide. You need to pay particular attention to the breech face area. You don't want to get CLP down into that hole that the firing pin comes out of. You may want to hold the slide breech face facing down as you're scrubbing it just to make sure you don't get CLP into it by accident. You also don't want to get CLP down into the striker channel. That's this area right here. I'm going to use the small end of this gun cleaning brush to get inside the rail channels. The thin part of the brush is also good for cleaning behind the extractor. The extractor is that hook looking piece right there. Now that I've loosened up all the dirt, I'm going to apply CLP to this angled cotton swab and clean inside the rails. Kind of like when I was pushing patches through the bore, the first one or two come out really dirty, but the more I repeat this step, the cotton swabs will start to come out more clean. I spend most of the time on the rail channels because they're high friction areas, but after I'm done with that, I go through the rest of the slide with a Q-tip and CLP and fine detail. Now I'm going to wipe the slide down inside and out. Now I'm going to reapply fresh CLP to the entire slide inside and out. I'm going to put a light coat on surface areas and a medium coat inside the rail channels and anything else that shows metal on metal wear. And just a reminder, try not to use excess CLP that may leak down into those areas that you want to try to avoid. Now I'll clean the recoil spring. I'm going to add CLP to the nylon brush and scrub in between the coils. Now I'm going to clean it off by rolling it over the rag. Add CLP to the brush and start scrubbing all outer surfaces of the frame. An easy way to clean the inside of the magazine well is add CLP to the rag, wrap it around the brush, and gently clean inside the magazine well. You don't want to just shove the rag in there forcefully because there's some more smaller intricate parts towards the top of the frame. That's why I'm going slow on this area right here. Now I'm going to focus on the inside of the frame and I'm going to give the rail special attention since those are high friction areas. And the thin part of the brush is great for getting into smaller hard to reach areas of the frame. Once I feel like I've loosened up all the fouling and carbon, I'm going to add more CLP to a cotton swab and go through everything in fine detail. By the way, here's a close-up of the rails. I don't want to leave CLP on the grips. I want them completely dry, so the best way to do that is just wrap a rag around it and squeeze. Now I'm going to go through the remainder of the grip and wipe off any excess CLP. Now that the frame is dry, I'm going to add fresh CLP to the cotton swab and reapply it to the high friction areas and anything that shows metal on metal wear. An example of that is adding a drop to the rails and smoothing it out with a cotton swab.
Now I'm going to clean the magazine. Now unless you've dropped it in mud, sand, dirt, or something like that, it's not necessary to disassemble this every time you clean. If you do need to disassemble it, I don't think you need a video to show you how to do it. It's really simple. All you do is press that button at the bottom of the base plate. You can use a pin or a brass punch or something like that. The base plate slides off. Just use your nylon brush and your rag to clean the inside of the magazine sleeve. Use CLP, but make sure it's completely dry when you're done. You just don't want to leave excess CLP inside the magazine because that's going to attract dirt. Then just put it back together the same way you took it apart. The follower goes in first, then the spring, then the base plate. So this magazine doesn't need to be disassembled. I'm just going to give it a basic wipe down. I'm going to add CLP to the brush and brush all outer surfaces. But I'm going to be careful not to leak CLP down into the follower or the witness holes. Once I'm done scrubbing the magazine down, I'm going to wipe it off with a clean rag. And I'm going to make sure it's completely dry. There's no need to leave an extra layer of protectant on the magazine. This smaller part of the recoil spring goes towards the muzzle end and this flat part goes towards the chamber end. So push the smaller end of the recoil spring towards the muzzle end, compress it, and release the flat part or the larger part of the recoil spring towards the chamber end. Now line up the rails on the frame with the rail channels on the slide and push the slide back on. Now do a function check. Pull the trigger but don't release it. Work the slide, let your finger off the trigger, it should reset. Now pull it again, you should hear a click. If it does, everything's good. I want to make sure it locks back on an empty magazine, so I'm going to insert a mag and pull the slide back. If it stays back on its own, everything's good. So that's it. I made this video for total beginners. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.